Jesus, love you, Jesus loves you. So how do I get saved? How do I go to heaven? How do I get saved? How do I go to heaven and not to hell? Eternal lake of fire. There is one name given among men by which we must be saved, and that's the name of Jesus. In whatever language you want to say that, it's the name of Jesus who died on the cross and rose from the dead. He's God who He's God who became a man, lived a perfect life. He was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, lived perfectly, no sin, and he died in our place on the cross, took all of our punishment. So, um, anyways, let me probably repeat myself, but let me start from the beginning. God made everything. God made apps. Jesus is God. So Jesus made everything. <laughs> he made everything and he made Adam and Eve and they could do whatever they wanted, except they weren't supposed to do this one thing. And they did it. And because they did it, he said, in the day you eat of the fruit of the tree, you'll die. And so sin spread from then from Adam and Eve to everyone. So, and everyone sins. So like I'm from Adam and Eve, everyone is from Adam and Eve. So I could blame it on Adam and Eve, but I'm a sinner. So I deserve to die. The wages of sin is death. The Bible says, so I deserve to die for my own sin. It's not Adam and Eve's fault. It's I was born a sinner. I sin. I choose to sin. I can't get out of it unless God frees me, unless I get saved. So how do I get saved? So God's, I'm taking this, I listened to a sermon just now, so I'm kind of borrowing some of the information, but it's biblical truth. So it's all from the Bible. But because we're sinners, God, God's wrath remains on us. So if you live, if you're born, you live and you die in your sin. If you die in your sin, you go to the lake of fire forever. And God is your biggest enemy because God is, it's Jesus said, don't fear the one who can kill the body, but fear the one who can kill the body and the soul in hell forever. So don't be worried, worried about anything except for God. The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So to fear God, to be afraid of God. But the song Amazing Grace by John Newton, Amazing Grace, Amazing Grace uh, was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear is relieved. So if you fear God, you keep being afraid of him until you find the solution, which is Jesus. So Jesus is God. He became God and human, was born through a virgin, and lived a perfect life, died on the cross in our place, and rose from the dead three days later. And he took, I deserve to go to hell forever, the lake of fire forever, to pay for my sins against an infinite eternal God. Infinite eternal wrath awaits me. But Jesus took my infinite eternal wrath because Jesus is God. He's infinite and eternal. So on the cross, Jesus took all of God's wrath towards me, his infinite eternal wrath for me and for everyone who gives their life to Jesus. He took that wrath. So, but an important thing is, so he took that wrath, died, and then rose again to prove that he had paid for it and to prove that he was God and to prove that he had paid the debt for everyone who would give their life to Jesus. So Jesus, when he lived a perfect life, died on the cross, rose from the dead, Jesus is God. When he did that, uh, he opened the way back to himself he made a way to go to heaven before that there wasn't a way to go to heaven like nobody was getting in not moses not elijah john the baptist whoever nobody was getting in so when jesus did that he opened the way to go to heaven and the way is jesus said i am the way and the truth and the life nobody comes to the father but through me jesus is the father he's one with the father they're three in one. So Jesus is the way to himself. 
you get to Jesus by going through Jesus when you realize that Jesus is God. Anyways, so Jesus opened the way, but we have to give our life to that way, which is Jesus. Like, Jesus is the way. So you give your life to Jesus. Like, Jesus, uh, uh, anyways, like, and, uh, it, it says in the Bible, repent of your sins and believe in Jesus. Repent is to turn away from everything, turn away from your sin, turn away from yourself and what you want. You turn your back on literally, turn your back literally on everything, and you give your life to one thing, to Jesus and what he says. Your only allegiance. I, I said when I got saved, I didn't know if I needed to get saved or recommit my life. Sometimes I thought I was a pretty good Christian. Other times I was worried about hell. And I didn't know if I should get saved or recommit my life. I already knew about Jesus and the cross. I already knew that Jesus loved me. I already knew about Jesus and the cross. But I sensed that fear that I wasn't a part of God's family, that I wasn't good enough. Like, you have to be as good as God to get into heaven. And I realized I'm not as good as God, and I'm not a part of his family. And so I said, I don't know if I need to get saved or recommit my life. And I just said, told Jesus, I said, Jesus, from now, I said it in my heart, Jesus, from now on, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. So I gave myself to Jesus, who is the way. So, and then after I said in my heart, Jesus, from now on, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Then I walked to the front of the church to prove to everyone, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So I confessed to the world, I'm giving my life to Jesus. And I, I believed in my heart, I gave my life to Jesus. So Another thing that this, I listened to this pastor, and another thing he talks about is like being a slave of Christ, being a slave of Jesus, and that's what's necessary to get saved. Jesus is God. He lived a per he became human, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, rose from the dead three days later, paid for sin. He is the way, but how do you get him? You have to get him somehow. And that's why the Bible says, you'll find me when you seek me, when you seek for me with all your heart. So you have to read, read especially the New Testament. Genesis is like the beginning. And then the whole Bible is important, but especially the New Testament and the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you're struggling, go to Psalms. Psalms is helpful. But as far as getting saved, go to the New Testament. And the Bible says, ask and you will receive, seek, and you'll find, knock, and the door will be opened unto you. you got to keep banging on the door of heaven. Keep seeking after Jesus with all your heart until you find him. Because it says that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of holiness, he's holy. The Holy Spirit, he's holy and he's a spirit. But it also the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. So you can actually meet God face to face when you feel the Holy Spirit working on your heart. You give your life to Jesus. There's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves and the Father draws, but you give your allegiance and your life. The Holy Spirit moves, the Father draws, but you give your life to Jesus. So when you feel something working on your heart, it's got to be holy, righteous, pure, true, and loving and warm. So if it's a loving feeling, a warm feeling, it's true, it's pure, it's holy, it's just, it's righteous, that's Jesus. When you feel like you're going to go to hell, you're going to die and go to hell, and but Jesus will save you if you give your life to Jesus. So Jesus provided the way, he is the way, he paved the way but you have to become his slave. You, terms of surrender. The only terms of surrender that God will take is if you give everything to Jesus. And you promise that. from the, It's like a marriage. From this day forward, I'm your slave, Jesus. 
and then you also become his friend and his uh his you become his friend and his family but you're you're still and a soul a soldier but you're his slave too like the main necessity for salvation is becoming his slave and then you realize i'm also a son i'm also a soldier i'm also part of his family i'm his friend but god is first your master you have to make him your master and it's like a it's like a once for all i give everything to you jesus so anyways jesus provided the way but you have to find a way to get jesus so you ask you seek you knock you strive with all of your might to give your life to jesus and uh and you ask God to save you. You pray, Jesus, please show me yourself. Jesus, please save me. You read the New Testament. You listen to sermons. You listen to Christian worship music. You listen to hymns. Like you pray, you pray, ask God what he wants, not what you want. So you keep draw and, and, uh, but I also want to say that, uh, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is a day of salvation. If you hear his voice, don't harden your don't harden your hearts. So today, if you hear his voice, give your life to Jesus right now. Just say, Jesus, from now on, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. And then like bang on the table or something. And then like, I don't know, call 10 people and tell them that you gave your life to Jesus or something. Or like announce it, you know, send an email out that I gave my life to Jesus, but, and it, so give your life to Jesus. And, uh, for, for me, I heard God calling me like many times I was worried about death and hell and the lake of fire. And, uh, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to give my life to Jesus. Like it was probably pride and selfishness and stupidity, but I couldn't do it. And I just said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Please save me. Please have mercy on me. Please save me. And I kept reading the New Testament. I kept reading the New Testament, asking Jesus to save me, trusting that Jesus would save me. And I kept seeking. I saw it with all my heart. And eventually I realized Jesus loves me. But if I don't give my whole life to Jesus, I'll go to hell. So I didn't know if I was supposed to get saved or recommit. I just said, I gave everything to Jesus. Jesus, from now on, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. I said that in my heart, just between me and Jesus, me and God. And then I walked forward to prove to everyone that I was giving my life to Jesus. So give your life to Jesus. Just say in your heart that you give your life to him and he's your master. And then, you know, send out an email to everyone. I gave my life to Jesus, so or whatever. But uh, get baptized. <laughs> you know, it, you got to have something to tell to tell everyone. You know, I belong to Jesus. So, uh, anyways, I just wanted to say that because a lot of times, people either most of the time people forget about giving your life to Jesus. They just emphasize Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He died on the cross for your sins, but you have to give your you have to become his slave and his uh, servant. You're also a son and a soldier and a family member, but you have to become his slave for life. Like boom, from now on, I give everything to Jesus, and then you get Jesus, and he'll help you live a holy, loving, righteous, truthful life. So. So, uh, but you can't take the cross away. Like if you just give your life to Jesus, but Jesus didn't die for your sins, you still couldn't go to heaven. And it's not about heaven anyways. It's about a restored relationship with Jesus. Like Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins so that we could be with him forever. And as soon as you give your life to Jesus, you feel the Holy Spirit on your heart. When you feel the Holy Spirit on your heart, that's the spirit of Jesus give your life to Jesus, Jesus from now on, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. And if it doesn't work, don't give up. Keep trying. Love you. Jesus loves you. Jesus.